Sabri Subi joins me now in the studio. I really look at business as an incredible vehicle to really like make good and make change in the world. Now, the beauty of cold calling is that you do not need to have any resources to do it other than a couple of dollars to throw up onto a VoIP account. It is an incredible opportunity that removes any kind of excuses of you going out and really building your business. And first of all, I do want to state that obviously cold calling and being in the trenches and is doing the hard yards. This is not an easy task. However, if you want to be successful, you have to pay the price. And you know, the things that I really want to cover with you is really kind of your attitude determines your altitude. And really knowing that you need to kind of breed this attitude of success and be really laser focused and be really hungry in order to get the most out of the script and in order to make it work for you. So some of the points that I want to cover with you is I really you need to kind of create this belief that you can sell anybody. So any call that you can jump on, anybody can be sold. Either they're selling you all the excuses why they don't have the time to, to speak to you right now or why they don't have the money or you're selling them on all the reasons why this is going to be really beneficial for them. And you also need to really have a fundamental belief that the product or service that you're selling is worth 10 times of what you're charging. You need to get sold every day on really this problem that you're solving for your clients and knowing and fully believing that you are the best person to go out there and solve this problem for them and for your marketplace. And you basically have to be willing to follow up forever, right? The fortune is in the follow up in sales. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff out there where people are saying that you can close people on one call and all this kind of stuff, the majority of sales are made between the fifth and the twelfth contact. So you really need to have that in your mindset and know from the outset that this is going to require a follow-up process. And my rule of thumb is that you want to follow up forever until either they say yes or no, right? And, and once they've kind of said a hard no to you, then you can move on. But up until that case, we will not be tolerating any maybes or anything like this, this is not a decision that they can just put on the shelf and come back to when they're ready. We need a decision and we will follow up until we get that decision. Now, the other thing that I want you to know is that on the call, he who is in control is the one that wins. You must take control on these calls, even by force, meaning that you always need to be leading, right? You're the person that's in charge. You are the authority. You are the expert and you are the proven master. And you need to basically take that prospect by the hand and show them that you're in control. The other thing is that you must treat everybody respectfully, right? So it's a very fine balance of having that respect, but also being the authority as well. You need to treat people with respect. If you want to be respected, then you need to respect people. However, there's some clear do's and don'ts that you don't want to do on the call. You do not want to thank people for your time. You know, you are the authority. You, it's almost lucky that they're speaking to you on this subject and that you've called them with this opportunity. The other thing is that you never never ever want to depend on one call or one deal. I see this all the time in sales. You know, someone will get off a call, they'll feel really good about themselves and before the sale is even made, they're kind of patting themselves on the back and they're kind of feeling like, you know, they're almost being rewarded because they've had a really good sales call. And then they might kind of anticipate them closing that deal later on in the week and when that falls through, you know, it's kind of just breaks their whole demeanor and breaks their attitude and breaks any momentum that they've had because in the mind, in their mind, they've kind of said, okay, this person's going to buy. And then when that deal falls through, you know, they're losing that momentum. So you want to have your, your pipeline so full that, you know, just one deal isn't going to take any steam or any win from your sales. You can keep that momentum going because you can rest at night knowing fully well that you have a solid pipeline of deals that you're going to close. Now, the other thing that I want to say is that you must pay the price for success, right? I'm telling you right now that this process will not be easy. However, it will be highly rewarding. If you think that you can kind of go out there and people are just going to be throwing money at you on these cold calls, then, you know, you've got another thing coming for you. So really what I want you to do is really take the mindset that this is going to be a stretch. This is going to stretch you as a person, but it's also going to be an incredible growing, you know, exercise for you. And you're really going to learn a lot from this process, right? However, you need to understand that and you need to go in there with that mindset. 
And the thing that I keep coming back to is that, you know, successful people do all the things that unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. You're in a room, you've got a headset on, you've got your hands free so you can take notes and you are really, really focused. And the first part of making these calls is essentially you're going to be met by the gatekeeper. And that is really kind of the first hurdle that we're going to meet is how do we get past that gatekeeper or, you know, the person that's holding us back from pitching the person that we really need to get through. So you're going to be calling on businesses and the gatekeeper is nine out of 10 times going to be the receptionist. And in some instances, they may have a personal assistant that you need to get through as well. However, for this instance, we're going to be just talking about the receptionist. So you're going to call on them. They're going to answer the phone and say, you know, hello, this is XYZ company. How can I help you? So I'm going to break this script into two parts. One, if you know the decision's name, the decision maker's name from creating a list previously and you're calling on people and you have their first name already. And then I'm also going to show you how to call on people when you do not know the decision maker's name. So with you do, um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to just call up and you're always just going to use their first name. If you know this guy's name's John Smith, you're not going to say, hey, could I please speak to John Smith? Because that's what a salesperson would do, right? We're trying to go under the radar here and slip in like we already know this person. So we're going to say, hi, could you please put me on to John? Just straight through, you want to know that person by the first name. And a pro tip on that is when the receptionist answers the phone, really be attentive and listen to their name. They'll generally say, oh, hi, it's Rebecca from XYZ Company. Then you would say, hey, Rebecca, it's Subri. Could I please speak with John? Immediately, it's like a first by first name basis. And they're thinking, okay, this guy knows my name. He knows John's name. He, he must know them. And they'll put you straight through. However, if they don't and they say, who's calling? You know, say, tell him it's Subri. Um, do you know it is in right now? So right now, what am I doing? I'm in control. I'm not just answering the question that she's asking me, but then I'm also hitting her with another question, right? I'm saying, yeah, look, tell him it's Subri. Do you know it is in right now? I am taking control once again of this call. Now, if she says, yeah, look, what, what company are you calling from? Just tell him it's King Kong. He should be familiar with us. I don't mind holding. Thank you. Again, just I'm making it very brief, very kind of brash. I just want to get over this and, and not be asking, you know, with an upward inflection at the end of what I'm saying because I'm, I'm busy, I'm authoritative. I just want to get through to the person that I need to speak to. And the less that you allude to more details, the less they'll feel like they can ask you questions and the higher your chances of just sliding under the radar and getting through to the person that you need to speak to. So then if you do not know the decision maker's name, let's run through that one. If you've just got a list of businesses that you're calling on and you have no idea, you know, who the person you're calling from. And that's how I did it. I was just calling businesses that were running Google AdWords and I was just going in as cold as you can ever go. Okay, so... Basically, for this, you would just go, oh, hi, it's Sabri here. I'm calling about whatever you're calling about. Now, a, a tip that I found is if you're calling on someone for, for Google AdWords, um, you, what you want to do is you don't want to say, hey, I'm calling about your advertising or your marketing, right? That's just, so they get a 100 calls like that a day. You want to say, hey, I'm calling in regards to your Google AdWords account. Hi, I'm calling in regards to your web hosting account. Hi, I'm calling in regards to your PR account. When you put the word account or program or service or something like that at the end of what you're talking about, that feels like to that person that you're calling about an existing relationship that is already in place there. You're not going, I'm just calling about your Google advertising. Okay, this is someone that is trying to call us up and sell us advertising. I've been taught as a, go as a gatekeeper just to close this call down as quick as possible and stop these nuisance telemarketers, right? That is what you're heading into. And you must differentiate yourself from that. And this is the way that you do it, you know, by putting the word account in their program or whatnot. And then once you've gotten through that component of saying the service plus the account or program or whatever it is that you're calling about, you want to end then and just say, look, and I need to speak with the business owner or person who handles this right? You're not going to be speaking with a really upward inflection and say like, hey, I need to speak with the business owner, the person who handles this. That sounds too salesy. You do not want to sound like a salesperson. You want to sound like somebody who is calling up about an existing account, like there might be a problem that needs to be solved with this account that's in place. That is how you're going to have the greatest cut through. 
So then once you kind of do that, depending on how good your delivery is, they're generally going to meet you with a question of where are you calling from? And then you say your company name. So you say, hey, it's King Kong. They should be familiar with us. I'll hold. Thank you. You're again taking control. You know, you're not waiting for them to say, oh, let me just put you on hold and check. You're just going straight in. Look, I'll hold. Thank you. It's not even a question here. Then if they ask you what the call is regarding at this point. So I want you to imagine this scenario and imagine the shoes of this gatekeeper, right? They're on the telephone. They've taken a call from somebody that they don't know. And the director is in their room or the business owner. And they're kind of picking up the call and going, hey, it's, you know, it's Subri from King Kong or your business name and where you're from. And that's the dynamic. Okay. What's going on here? So you'd say, you know, just tell him, like, you, you'll know whether it's a him or a her, hopefully at this stage, and say, look, just tell him I'm calling regarding the AdWords account or whatever you're calling. And you want to keep this very vague, right? And a number one rule that I have is to never, ever, ever, by under any circumstance, pitch the gatekeeper, right? If she's trying to, like, find out more, never just slip into, like, pitching, oh, it's about your Google AdWords account. And I, like, no, that is not how you do it. You will never, ever get through. That gatekeeper doesn't have the power to make a decision. So don't pitch her. It's just a waste of your time or him, right? So the way that you do that is you just say, look, I'm calling about the Google AdWords account. Keep it nice and vague. Are they in? I don't mind holding. Thanks. Okay, so it's really important at this stage that you're not alluding to too much details. Oh, what's wrong with the AdWords account? Look, it's best that I speak to him. I don't mind holding thanks. Nice and brief, not giving out too much information. Or um, when they ask kind of what calling, what company are you calling from? Um, look, she should know why I'm calling. Um, you can tell her that it's Subri from King Kong. I can hold a moment while you transfer me. Yeah, again, I'm in control. I'm letting know that I'm the person that is going to basically be leading this conversation. One thing that can happen is they've got the decision maker on the line and they're like, oh, he says he doesn't know. He's not familiar with you. He doesn't know why you're calling. Really? Tell him about, it's about the email that I sent him last Tuesday. So you need to make sure that generally that you have kind of sent them some kind of email collateral. Um, so you can use that as a reference point. And that's something that you can always just lay back on. Yeah. Tell him that I sent him an email last Tuesday. And now at this stage, you will get through nine out of 10 times. He's not going to have the chance to go through and look at his inbox and find out the email that he received last Tuesday. He'll just be like, oh, look, just put him through. The more back and forth that there are between you and that gatekeeper and the director, it kind of creates this little tension where her, she's been told not to keep people on hold for very long and just to kind of put that call through. And you've already in this kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat have gone back and forth a few times and you are still in control control and at this point is generally where the gatekeeper will cave and then let you through to the decision maker. What happens once you get through past the gatekeeper, okay? So we've crossed that first hurdle. Now we're into the money zone. We're speaking to the decision maker and this is really where we have the opportunity to deliver this killer pitch. So now you're on the phone with the decision maker. So here's some effective openers that I've really tried and tested and perfected and have found to be the most efficient over the years from literally making over a million cold calls. This goes back to being respectful. You don't just wanna just jump in and railroad this person into a pitch immediately if they, don't have the per if they don't have the time to speak to you because you need to know that all cold calls are an interruption and we have disrupted his day. We don't know what they were doing and we're just, just kind of jumping jumped in on them, right? So you do need to be polite in asking them if they do have a minute now. If no, you simply want to state, right? Okay, no problems. When can I get your full attention for about 18 minutes to demonstrate how we can deliver big promise of what they want to do for your company? I assure you this won't be a waste of your time right? Nice, short, punchy. You're bringing it back to the end desired benefit they want. You're letting them know a specific time. You're not saying, when can I speak to you? And they have no understanding of what a time commitment they're making. Just 18 minutes of your time. And I guarantee you, this will be a good use of your time. So you're kind of finishing with a strong point as well. Then if they say yes, straight out the gate, and then what you want to do is you want to say, no problems, fantastic. How are you currently using Google AdWords to get more clients? How are you currently using, doing, applying X to get 
the desired outcome that you're after. So you can basically cut and paste whatever it is that your service is and whatever that big pain point for your market is at that point. Now, this is kind of a great way to get them speaking and get them talking a little bit. And depending on how much they give out to you at this stage is essentially how receptive that they are to receiving this phone call in the first place. So you wait until you get their response. Okay, so then you basically always want to be in agreement with the person. Whatever they say, you want to say, okay, fantastic, okay, great. Whatever that transition word is for you that you're really comfortable with. Okay, so would you be open to learning some ways that you could achieve the desired outcome and solve the biggest problem? pain point without the biggest frustration that they currently have. So it might be without spending more money on advertising or without, you know, hiring more people to do this or whatever the thing is. So again, I'll just go over that one more time. Okay. So would you be open to learning about ways that you could achieve the desired outcome and solve your biggest pain point without their biggest frustration? And if they say that they're busy at this stage, that's when you want to come back and say, no problems. I can call you back in 30 minutes if that would suit. Okay, so you're also giving them the option to set up another time later with you because the last thing that you want to be doing is pitching someone when you don't have their full attention. You will never ever move the ball further up the field if someone's got a million and one things going on right now in their day and they're kind of just half listening to you. You need to assure that you have their full attention. So it is good to basically give them this door as an entry point for them to say, look, can I give you a call back in 30 minutes um, if it doesn't work for them? And they will say, Say yes, and if they don't, then you can always tee up another time later on in the week that would be better for them. So then once you've kind of, you've got their undivided attention on these calls, then what you want to say is like you've gone through the pitch with them and, and they're kind of receptive to what you're talking about at this point. And then you would say, look, great, look, it sounds like you're a perfect fit for us. At this stage, they've already told you how they're using this or how they're kind of using this service or program to solve their biggest problem. So you've listened and you can probe a little bit at that point in the call and really find out what those pain points are. So we're not trying to close a deal on this call. We're trying to set up another call to really go through our offer in greater detail where we can set some time aside with that prospect. So this call is basically, okay, cool. You've done some initial probing. It sounds like you'd be a perfect fit. What I want to go do now is do this audit for you or give you all this free value or give you a roadmap, give you this cheat sheet and just tee up a time with you that I can walk you through that later in the week. Okay. So that's essentially what you want to get through. We want to take this person through those gradual steps that it takes in order to turn that person into a paying client. And then you would basically give them the option and say, hey, okay, cool. So are you available this week or next for a meeting? And then they'll say, if they say yes, you can say, all right, excellent. And you want to basically schedule that meeting. Now, when it comes to schedule a meeting, you'd never want to ask, you know, when works for you next week? You are simply asking for something then from that person. You're asking them to pull up their calendar, look for an available time slot. And you're asking that person to work for you, to work for you and basically do a task Ask that you've asked them to do. And that is the wrong way to approach it. You want to make this very simple and very easy, right? You basically want to give people options. So you would say, okay, look, um, you know, when works best for you this week or next, right? This week or next, that's an option. And then saying, okay, does Tuesday or Thursday work? And then they'll say, Tuesday works. Awesome. Morning or afternoon? And then they'll say, afternoon. T terrific. 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. It's just constantly giving them options. So it's just like they're just selecting and it keeps that momentum and makes this a very easy decision for them. So that's the process of what you want to do in terms of scheduling this meeting with them, making it as easy as possible, letting know that you'll be delivering some value on that call and you're going to go away and put something to work and come back to them with something of value. Basically, at this stage, if they're like, oh, look, no, I'm fine. We've got it all under control. I don't need you to look at it. Or you can still hear in the way that they're talking and from their tone that they're still unsure about something. What you would say to that is, well, look, in our experience, there's only six different mistakes that can prevent people or businesses or whoever you're calling on from receiving huge benefit number one 
And then huge benefit number two. I would simply like to give you, insert the Godfather offer at that stage, a complimentary audit to remove the biggest pain point that they're currently experiencing in their marketplace um, and achieve the desired outcome that they're looking for. Do you think a no obligation strategic meeting like this could help you understand your business slash problem better and achieve the huge desired benefit that they're looking to achieve in that marketplace? So it's a it's a nice way to pre-frame it where it's a very very hard to say no to that. We want to make them know that this is there's no obligation attached to it and they're not going to be jumping onto a super high pressure sales call. Now, at this stage, you know, they might say to you they're really receptive and things are going really great in the call. Okay, cool. What type of services does your company offer, Subria? And then at that stage, you basically want to just do an ex- briefly explain it, no more than 60 seconds in kind of the rundown of what you guys do, i.e., look, we do SEO, Facebook ads, and email marketing to generate hundreds of leads each week for our clients, um, but we need to conduct this free audit or analysis to better really understand and analyze your exact situation and your business to determine how that you're going to achieve the desired outcome for their specific business, i.e. who to target, you know, audience or your dream buyer and where we can find them for the lowest cost possible online and really let them know that while you're going to be telling about the services, you don't really want to get into the pitch at this stage. You simply want to go away and do this audit. So when you come back to them, it's all customized and tailored to exactly the business that they're in and the problems that they're experiencing in their marketplace. Moving forward, at this stage, you might also get hit with you know, another objection, which is we're already working with XYZ company, or how do you compare to XYZ company? At this stage, we'd say, awesome, look, that's great that you're already working with a company that looks after, insert what you're calling about, you obviously see the value in delegating that to a professional. What I'd simply like to do is schedule a free audit with you to determine what you're doing well now and what you need to do in order to achieve the desired outcome that they're in it for. And this is the fastest way possible to do that. If anything, it's simply a second pair of eyes and perspective on it, which can only do good, right? So again, no pressure. Just saying, look, it's just going to be another pair of eyes. I'd be happy to look at and prepare this report with you because until we get that second call, we're not going to even be in the vicinity of getting a client. So we really need to kind of just keep that open and let them, let us unearth some really, really good valuable insights for them, regardless of whether or not they choose to buy from us. Now, it's also important at this stage in the call that they might just be asking, okay, what do you guys charge? What's the price? Like, do you, what are your packages? Is there a gold, silver, and platinum plan? And you start to kind of reach these things. And you don't want to give out price at this stage, okay? So what you want to do is say, look, it all depends on the level of support and what we do for you. Whether we're doing service one that you offer or service two that you offer, i.e., you know, driving traffic or del- developing sales funnels, we create custom plans for every single client. There is no cookie cutter approach. This will all be tailored specifically to your business. So you just want to let them know that like you don't have any set plans. You know, before you even talk about price, we need to figure out if this person's a good fit and we need to go away and do our audit. Okay. Now you might be thinking, you know, what are these guys just wants to buy straight up? Now, what I've found is that, you know, from selling for many, many years, over a decade doing this stuff is, you know, the clients that you can get on a one call close aren't the clients that you want, right? You know, it's essentially, you want to basically, they, you want them to be informed and you want them to know. Someone that can make a decision so quickly um, and so brashly are generally the kind of people that can turn on you very quickly and also get cold feet and change their mind. So we want to get solid clients. We want to build a really stable consulting business. And this is the proven method of exactly how I've achieved that. So then moving forward, you know, some people, you know, skepticism is rampant online, right? Everybody is skeptical. So you need to address that and people are going to be skeptical and they're going to be wondering in the back of the mind, okay, what's the catch? Like, what's the catch about this? And rather than try to mask this and put any smoking mirrors about it, you know, my whole approach is let's just be radically transparent with this person. And that really creates a lot of goodwill with them. If you're just shooting them straight and you're just being honest. So the answer that I have and the one that I found that works the best for this is just saying, 
Look, basically, there is no catch, but I'll shoot you straight and be super transparent with you. This is how we get clients. So, however, let me be, be clear, right? This is not a high pressure sales pitch. We believe in delivering value in advance. And if you see the value in working with us, then you might want to become a client. If not, that is completely fine. You walk away with this free insert Godfather offer, audit, you know, checklist, roadmap, whatever it might be. Making it really easy letting them know like, cool, look, this is the way that we get clients. Like I'm just shooting you straight. Most people are so impressed by this whole process and they get so much value at the end, they actually ask to become a client. But if that's not you, that's all completely fine as well. I'm not going to pressure you into something that you don't want to do or that's not a good fit for you. And worst case scenario, you walk away with this free audit and a second pair of eyes on this big problem that you're trying to solve right now. Cool? Cool. And then you move on from there. Now, at this stage, they may be saying, oh, look, yeah, look, I'm just going to leave it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm fine. I'm really busy. I'm just going to kind of leave it where it sits. But thank you. you know, thanks, for, thanks for giving me a call. Look, this is how you answer that. Look, I recommend you schedule this free 23-point checklist action audit or action plan or roadmap on your Google AdWords accounts. There's no obligation. I can go over it with you later in the week. From the hundreds of people and businesses that I've spoken to, we've found that the most popular people in this situation normally are not fully utilizing insert the thing that you're calling about whether it's adwords or facebook's or you know weight loss or whatever it might be um, your Google AdWords account and can benefit greatly from this audit with the thing that you're calling about. So you're just basically saying, look, I speak with hundreds of businesses all the time and we've found that, you know, even whether or not you don't choose to go ahead as being a client, you're going to greatly benefit just by going through this process. So my recommendation is, look, let's just pencil that time in next week and let's just get this looked at for you. Right, very easy. I'm just pushing for that second call. I'm letting know, I'm keeping it like I'm dangling that piece of cheese there for them in terms of that order and that free thing that they're going to be getting for doing nothing. And then I'm also letting them know that I'm not going to pressure them and I'm not going to be that guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's just trying to close them super, super hard. Then we have the alternative choice close, which is essentially comes down to, you know, I can call you on Monday or on Thursday. So it's not like, would you like to take the call or wouldn't you like the call? We're going to go in with the presumptive close and just say, awesome, well, look, it sounds like you're going to benefit from this. When would suit best for me to go over that audit with you, Monday or Tuesday? Always give people options. Never make them work for you. So then once they have agreed to take the call, you just want to end it in a really positive way say, excellent, okay, John, no problems. I'll speak to you at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. I look forward to chatting to you and going through with the audit. Have a great day. You know, I'll have a chat to you then. And before you let them go, it's really important that you lock down this appointment. This should not be something that they're just kind of trying to brush you off the call and they're just agreeing with it just to get you off the call, okay? You really need to give them the option at this stage to cancel that meeting. So you need to say, okay, awesome. So I'm going to call you at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. John, is there any reason that you wouldn't be able to make that call? Oh, yeah, actually, I've got to pick up my son from Little League or, you know, I'm picking up my daughter from ballet classes or gymnastics or whatever it might be. Okay, cool, no problems. Let's scrap Tuesday. Then how does a Thursday work? And as silly as it might sound, because you've been in control this whole time, you know, sometimes they just go with what you're saying and you need to give them the opportunity to kind of take a bit of a breather and get them to look at their calendar and see if that time is going to work or if there's a conflicting agreement that, or a commitment that they already have on their calendar. And this gives them the opportunity to do that. Okay, no, I can, I can make that. 10 a.m. is going to be fine on Tuesday. Okay, fantastic. I'm just pull, putting you in my calendar now. I'll shoot across a meeting request. I look forward to chatting to you then. And then you wrap up the call. And that's essentially the process, right? We're pitching for that second call. We're pitching on how we're going to get a time that's not an interruption, where they They've kind of agreed to meet us in the middle and we've got some action items to talk through with them. Now, you want to end that call with impact as well. So you want to let them know and you want to sell them on appearing for that second meeting. Look, say, look, awesome, John. Look, I really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, I assure you that this will be a really good use of your time. You know, this 18 minutes will be the best amount of 18 minutes that you spend on your business this week. And in any case, that audit's going to provide you with a massive amount of value and really end with that high impact. You want to sell that appointment, sell that meeting so you get high show up rates on that and you get the chance to basically turn those people into paying clients.
The other thing that I really want to bring up to is throughout this process, you're going to get a lot of voicemails, okay? So once you've got the person's voicemail for the person that you want to speak to, so you know the guy's name's John and you know the company that he's at, then you can leave a voicemail, right? A lot of salespeople, like, you know, they like never leave a voicemail and that's just ridiculous, okay? If someone is going to get a missed call from your number and call back and they're going to see a company and you're trying to elude them and play all these games and this dance act with them, they're just going to stop and they're never going to pick up your calls. So if you've got a voicemail, you want to use that as an opportunity to pitch that prospect. Oh, hey, John, it's Subri from King Kong. I'm just calling about you know alarming issue to do with your Google AdWords account or some concerning issues regarding your website privacy policy. Do you want to hit me back on this number? Leave with your phone number. Always repeat your phone number twice, right? Don't make them listen to the voice message twice. Again, you're making them work. Yeah, look, it's Subri from King Kong. My number is dot, dot, dot. Da, da. Again, that's Subri with King Kong. Here's my phone number. Please give me a call back as soon as you get this, right? That's how you want to leave a voicemail. It is an opportunity to pitch, dial up the intrigue and get the call back. However, if you don't know that person's name, then never leave a voicemail because you're never going to, no one's going to call somebody back where you, you're just calling cold blanket. You have no idea who you're even calling from. And it's like, if you don't address that person in a voicemail, whose responsibility is it? To give them a call back. Is it the receptionist? Is it the, you know, who, who is it, right? So you just, just as a rule of thumb, don't leave a voicemail on those calls. Keep on calling until you get through that gatekeeper. And really what takes place here is you really want to just jump on the telephone with that prospect and start to do a needs analysis, right? You want to, as I say, sell like a doctor. So you don't want to go in there feeling like, oh no, what am I going to say? What's going to, you know, what am I going to do? What's that magic closing technique that I'm going to use on them that's just going to make them say yes and buy right now? We don't need to pull any rabbits out of our hat at this stage, okay? All we're simply doing is jumping on the call and then we're just going to start off by saying, okay, sure, well, Look, tell me a little bit about where you're at with this problem, what you're currently doing. And you're basically doing a diagnosis, right? And you're not going to prescribe anything to this person, like in the medical industry, before you've done a proper diagnosis, okay? So the way that you want to do that is, you know, you might be, as to use the example of the, the health consultant or wellness coach again, you might jump on that call and you say, okay, no problems. Well, could you tell me a little bit more about what you're currently doing? to improve your energy. Run me through what are the problems you're experiencing. And then they're gonna be telling you, you know, all of those problems. And then you might be asking and probing for further questions. Okay, sure, well, what are you eating? What does your exercise regime look like? You know, you, what time are you going to bed at night? And you're further just trying to identify, you know, what it is, what problem that they're experiencing. And what I see like most people do and most consultants do is that they get into this environment and they're basically like, you know, squeeze using all different areas of the body saying, oh, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Rather than just saying, hey, like, where are you experiencing pain right now? And that's all we're trying to do on this call is finding out, like, what is that pain point and really what is that kind of, like, bruised knee or that wound that we can kind of help them and address. So you're just going to want to get on there and probe them and, and do a good thorough needs analysis and find out where they're at. Then once you've found out where they're at and all the problems, and then you want to start getting to, okay, well, what have you done so far to address this problem? And then you want to hear about like how they're kind of tackling about fixing this problem and what are some of the efforts that they're already making to do that. And at this stage, you don't want to have ever mentioned your product or what you do or what you sell and how much you charge. Like most salespeople and most consultants, they're basically looking for any opportunity just to freaking open up their pitch and start pitching this person full blown. You want to take a completely different approach. You want to be leaned back in your chair. You want to be resting and just gathering all the facts. And before you like jump on that call and go, yeah, I just want to jump on the phone and sell this person. You need to find out whether or not they're going to be a great fit for your program in any case. And the way that you do that is by asking questions. So once you've gone through that process and then you've answered all, you know, you've kind of asked them all the questions, they've answered all those questions and you're confident at this stage that they're a good fit, then you can proceed to tell them about how you can help them. 
them. Then after you've gone through that process, you want to prescribe the solution of exactly what it is that you're selling as being the perfect fit, like a glove for the problems that they're experiencing. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the like button and subscribe. We're dropping a video on YouTube every other day. And if you've got any questions about any of the content that I covered in this video, just basically leave a comment with hashtag HeySubri in the comment section. And every week we're also trying to go through all those questions and get them answered. So go ahead, click subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.